so i am chaitanya i'll be talking about jack and jill um so i do android development and python development professionally um uh, jack and jill are the new uh, java tool chain that uh, google has introduced uh, basically they give you java 8 support um in limited fashion if you are using android m or below um basically you get lambda expressions and uh, you get method references um so we'll go over what the existing tool chain is like and what the new tool chain is like and why you might or might not want to use them um so jack stands for java android compiler kit um and jill is the intermediate library linker uh jack basically takes your java source code in your android app and uh, converts it uh, directly into the dex files that are there in your uh, android app um jill is responsible for taking any external libraries that you're using and converting them into a format that jack can understand there is a special format that it converts it into uh, called dot jack uh, we'll go over what that is and why it does that um so it was introduced by google in 2014 uh, it is officially supported by google uh it is the only way to get java 8 in your android apps um and they have been working hard on it for some time now um however there are some drawbacks still um the stated objective is to improve build times and to simplify development uh by reducing the number of tools involved in taking your java source and converting it into the android app um they are the future and uh, if you doing any aosp development uh then you must have already seen uh, the use of jack for compiling the android source um like i said it is the only way to use java it features um so what are the benefits of using uh, jack and jill uh if you are at api 24 or below as in uh, api 23 or below which is android marshmallow you get lambdas and method references um so if you using retro lambda right now uh for getting lambdas then uh, you could stop using that with this uh, if you are in the magical land of android n uh, and above where your minimum sdk is android n um then i would like to join your company <laughs> and uh, you would get stream apis uh, default and static interface methods and functional interfaces um uh, stream apis are quite awesome um anup actually went a little over them um we'll go over them also um so this is the current build process uh you have your java source uh the java compiler convert, converts it into java bytecode uh if you using proguard or jcoco or whatever uh intermediate bytecode tools this is where they come in uh, after the java, the java bytecode has been generated they convert the java bytecode into this modified form which is then passed on to the dx tool which gives you your android bytecode um any third party libraries that you're using would also come in at this point uh, and they would be passed along with your main classes to the dx tool so as you can see there are multiple tools involved there is a java c compiler there is proguard and jcoco or whatever else you're using and then there is dx so uh, google wanted to reduce that and uh, reduce the number of dependencies involved here um So in Jack and Jill you have the Java source code and you directly get Android bytecode. There is no intermediate uh, step involved. Um but if you are using any third party libraries then you need an intermediate step to make Jack understand what the third party library is. So there is this uh, external dot jack format um and uh hola yeah. So this is the entire build process in simple terms. Uh this is also the entire build process but not in simple terms uh essentially google wanted to make it look complex uh but it is the same thing you have the application module uh, which is your java source code and you have your third party libraries uh and all of them are converted through the jill into this dot jack library file and passed on to uh jack so if you're using kotlin or any other jvm language like scala then it would also pass through jill so there is um, a cost involved in using a third party library because it is not directly passed on to the compiler 
there is an intermediate step involved. So uh, this is the .jack format. This is what it comprises of. There is a special format of the code called JS, uh, which is separate from the Java bytecode, intermediate bytecode. Uh, it looks different if you look at it. We'll look at it in a little while. Uh, the code is also pretext in order to bring some optimizations and any resources or meta information that your library has, they would also be packaged in here. So uh, this is a simple for loop. Uh, we'll, this, is a, this is what it would look like in a class file and this is what it would look like in a dex file. You can see that the class file and the dex file are relatively similar because this is because they are optimized for uh, not for processing but for storage. Uh, whereas JS is optimized for processing. Uh, class and X are optimized for storage because uh, essentially the Android uh, environment is such that you have limited storage. So that is what they are optimized for. Uh, JS is at the intermediate step. Uh, you can see it looks very, very dissimilar. Uh, Google says that it helps with uh, processing, but whatever. Uh, so assuming that I have uh, convinced you to at least try it out, uh, this is how you would do it. In your Gradle build file, you would say jack options and you would set enable to true. Uh, that is about it. Uh, and essentially, if you want to use, if you just want to try it out, you can put it in one of your product layers. Just call it experimental. Um, if you want to minify it, you can set minify enable. And if you want to use ProGuard, this is where it would come in. So, um, like I said, uh, Jack does all the things that any external library, any external tool that you might be using would do. So any minification, obf obfuscation, uh, repackaging, all of that would be done by Jack. So your ProGuard files would be read by Jack and the obfuscation would be done by Jack. So ProGuard doesn't really come into the picture here. Uh, if you want to set any additional parameters, that is also uh, here. So this as in jack dot incremental sets the incremental build to true, so it would do incremental builds. Uh, you can check out what the different properties available are, like the incremental build property. Karthik. Uh, so um, you can check out what different parameters are available by uh, running the uh, jack.jar file. It is there in your build tools version folder. Uh, you could pass the help properties. Yeah, you could pass your uh, help up, uh, help properties flag and it would run return all the different uh, available parameters. For instance, uh, the assert policy parameter would allow you to uh, set what the uh, assert policy is. So when do you want the asserts to run? Uh, do you want them to run always or just at one time or never? Uh, so there are different parameters available. Um, so what are the different implications of running this? Um, any annotation processes that you might be using like dagger or button knife, uh, they would still run. Uh, any bytecode processors would also run like uh, Jekoko Retro Lambda. However, you would probably not use Retro Lambda if you're using Jack Engine. Uh, like I said, uh, any JVM languages that you're using would be supported by Agile. Uh, instant run is not yet supported. That is one big negative. Um, your uh, build times would be slightly or very highly slower depending on whether it is a clean build or an incremental build. Um, so this is uh, a test I ran with an app I was making. Um, so the yellow bar represents the current build process and the blue bar represents Jack and Jill. Uh, for a clean build, you can see there is about uh, 20 seconds of difference, uh, whereas for an incremental build, the difference is wider. Uh, the difference varies based on how incremental the build is, how many classes you might have changed. Um, so this is one major negative of using uh, Jack and Jill. Uh, byte code based link tools won't work. However, there aren't really many bytecode tools uh, based for uh, bytecode based line tools. So that is a minor negative. Uh, so transform API is not supported. 
uh, transform API is used for rel. So rel is essentially not working for uh, Jack and Jill. Uh, the transform API essentially tells your uh, any third party libraries that you might be using uh, that a Gradle build has been performed, but uh, the final pro uh, final build has not completed. So there's it informs the third party library that intermediate bytecode is available. So since intermediate bytecode is not really made, therefore the transform API is not supported. Uh, I don't know how they'll end up supporting it, but uh, there are a couple of bugs filed in the Realm uh, bug tracker as well as the Jack and Jill bug tracker. Um, application performance and app sizes are comparable. There was no real difference. Um, so. The big thing, like I said, that you get is Java 8 language features. Um, in order to use the Java 8 language features, you have to add a couple of other lines. Uh, source compatibility and target compatibility. You are essentially setting it to Java version 1.8. Um, so if you're using API 23 or lower, your minimum SDK is API 23 or lower, uh, then you get method references, lambda expressions, uh, and type annotations. So we'll just go over uh, lambda expressions and method references right now, because those are the major positives. Um, so how many of you know what lambda expressions are? Okay, you guys know. So uh, essentially, you can replace your on-click listeners uh, by the lambda expressions. Your boilerplate will reduce. It is good all around. It looks nice to read. Um, if you have Basically, lambda expressions are used for replacing any uh, uh, anonymous classes that you might be using, which have a single function. Uh, so, for instance, the method, uh, the onclick listener here has been replaced with just the uh, activate view call. And if you just have a single instruction in the lambda expression, then you can just reduce it to one line. Um, method references allow you to use to make it even shorter, uh, allow you to call a method within the lambda expression. Uh, so for instance, this uh, uh, lambda expression, you can just call the activate method instead of just writing the call. Um, so if you are in the magical land, like I said, you get all of these things. Um, you get utility APIs, stream APIs, uh, and a lot of other things. So we'll just go over the stream API for now because we have limited time. Um, stream APIs are quite wonderful because they let you chain uh, a set of commands together uh, and run them on a single object. So if you want to, um, for instance, say filter runs, uh, filters, yeah. So for instance, if you want to uh, filter a list and then check for different words that contain droid and then sort them, and then limit it to 10, and you want to run all of these things together, then you would call the stream APIs. Um, essentially, they run uh, in multiple threads out of the box, so if you want to do multi-threading, uh, then this is perfect for you. Um, and this is the biggest positive, uh, I would say, that comes with Jack and Jill. Um, so, in conclusion, uh, it is very easy to enable a tryout. You can do it in a couple of minutes. You get some Java 8 features if you are if you are uh, at minimum SDK less than 23, as in Marshmallow or below. You get a lot more Java features, Java 8 features, if you uh, are at uh, SDK 24 or above. And for now, it is slower than the existing tool chain. However, um, Google says that they are working on it, so hopefully that will change. Um, there are a few resources here that you might want to check out, um, and thank you. If you have any questions, now would be the time. There's a question there. So do you know any of the Java 8 uh, APIs are probably coming in support library? Probably any word from Google that they might include some of them, like 
do you really functions and all that in support library because they used to do it and they still do it for some APIs. Um, so they have said that they are working on it, but there has been no release from them. Uh, even the uh, I should have mentioned this in the talk, but even the uh, lambda expressions and method references that you get for API 23 and below, those are essentially syntactic sugar. Uh, so they are in the background. They are making uh, anonymous classes as well. Uh, it is not real lambdas. It is essentially replicating retro lambdas. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So if there are any features that work like that, uh, then uh, Google has said that they would work with Jack and Jill or the support libraries to include them. Uh, but nothing as of now apart from this. Okay, thanks. Are there any specific pain points if we want to migrate an old app with this? I don't see. Oh, yeah. Okay. Are there any pain points? Uh, not really. It uh, works out of the box. Whatever the, if you are at, uh, what, what API are you using? Like uh, 23. 23. So it will work right out of the box. Uh, lambdas and method references will work. There is uh, not really any any issue with uh, data binding. Uh, no, there were actually a couple of issues uh, until three months ago, but they have resolved any bugs that are outstanding. So right now there are no bugs. Okay, thanks. Hey man, uh, so Jack sort of uh, skips the uh, dot class part of it and directly dexes. Yes. Right. Yes. So uh, have you noticed any performance gains by this during build time? Uh, no, there are no performance gains as yet. Okay, that it takes, is my, slower. takes my heart. I just <laughs> count. <laughs> but, okay, thanks. Any more questions? Okay, thank you, Satan. Thank you.